Spring has arrived, and so has a new era of leadership in Nebraska athletics. This is the Pick 6 Podcast. I'm Evan Bland, along with Sam McEwen in Omaha and Tom Chattel from what looks to be his hotel in Detroit. Uh, and it's one of those kind of transition podcasts today where uh, we'll talk a little bit of Nebraska men's and women's hoops ending their seasons at the NCAA tournament. We'll get into spring football and a little bit of uh, Troy Dannon, the new era, and having the chance to meet with him for the first time. How, how are you guys doing uh, today? And um, it, it, does it feel like kind of a, a busy, exciting time? Or what's kind of the vibes for you guys right now? Waiting for a game. Uh, I, I'm a little I – would, I would describe the last two to three weeks, and obviously Tom's been uh, covering basketball in Memphis and now in Detroit following Creighton. I think it's been pretty, pretty exhausting. Yeah. And so the Trev news on top of that, and then, the, you know, hiring Dan that quickly, um, there was this moment on Tuesday where we're all at the press conference and there seemed to be like an offer of like, well, do you want to talk some more? Or, and literally everybody in the media pool was like, I think we've had enough. Like, and Dan had talked for 30 minutes. So it wasn't like we were, you know, cutting him short or we asked all the questions we wanted to ask. But but I think everybody's pretty like, yeah, th there's been a lot going on for the last month. Usually by March, we're really not all that into Husker hoops. Um, maybe the women's team is in the tournament, but the men's team hadn't been in in a decade. And so I think everything, everything just turned into very, a very intense month of coverage. And so like, I'm sort of coming out of that other side of, uh, of it. And, and, you know, today feels a little bit refreshing. I had a weird dream last night that, that Matt rule left Nebraska's football program and they, <laughs> they rehired Scott Frost. I'm that would serious. qualify as a nightmare. I think Yeah, I, it, it was, it, it was not, <laughs> but, <laughs> but Scott came back as like, you know, um, Crust like he was very he was he was angry and combative and they lost the game 16 13 to somebody I don't know who it was but I was like I I've immersed myself far too deeply in Nebraska athletics at this point if Scott Frost is coming back as as the head coach so that's kind of where I'm at I don't know where you know Tom's Tom's been uh everywhere and doing a ton of great work so I'm sure he's feeling some of that too yeah, you don't usually get the AD AD search, AD hire in the middle of basketball, but it is what it is, and um, it beats working. That's right. So let's start with the Troy Dannon hire. I mean, Nebraska makes the hire a week after Trev Alberts decides to leave, and then he has his introductory press conference this week. Let's start with just kind of the – the mood from the day. I mean, they had it on the third floor in West Stadium, which is the same place Nebraska celebrated Trev a few years ago and Bill Moose before that. But there were some kind of unique elements to the proceedings mm -hmm. where they're not. I mean, it was not just introduction and Troy Dan, and there were other voices involved. What were your guys' impressions about how Nebraska rolled out sort of the day and then what you heard from Troy Dan as well? Well, I I agree. It was it was a different atmosphere. I mean, nobody does coronations and celebrations like Nebraska, and I feel like there have just been so many of them over the years, and there ha, has been no um, you know, there's been no payoff. <laughs> just frankly, has been no payoff. So, um, at least not on the men's side. So, um. We were, people are still waiting for something to happen. And um, I think everybody feels good about Matt Rule, obviously, but another AD comes and goes. And, you know, people people were uh, latched on to Trev, and he he bailed after two years. And so people are, are, are I think, are very, very cynical, as they should be. And so I'm not saying Troy Dannon was met with uh, cynicism, but people are, are going to wait and see, and um, but I think he's he's a very good hire. Um, and don't worry about how long he's going to be here. These guys come and go. You can't the the days of 
Devaney and Osborne stand forever are gone. And um, and by the way, Nebraska's fired a few guys too. Um, so I, I I think he's he he uh, speaks the language. He said all the right things, and um, he's going to latch on to rule and give him what he wants. And they're going to be partners, and um, you know, there, there's there's a lot there to like. Um, but I mean, is he on his way? Is, is he on his way back to Iowa one day? I don't know, and I don't care. Just do something while you're here, and we'll enjoy him while he's here. Um, but I did think he made a an interesting comment about Matt Rule. You know, something along the lines of imagine you know Matt Rule with the the gold mine of Nebraska. And I think he, Troy Dan may have been talking about himself. You know, that's why he came. Get the the things in place here. The there's so many more possibilities. There's so many more, uh, you know, things available that uh, for a head coach and an AD. So um, I think he'd be good. I and mean, like I said, every I've you know I've been hearing from former SIDs and former sports writers uh, for a week, and anybody that. Anybody that sports writers and SIDs like is is going to be a regular guy. So I think that's a good sign, and I think it'll serve him well. Um, but the Trev wore suits everywhere. My advice to Dannon, go, you know, I go get a pair of jeans and, uh, and 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 maybe some kind of Nebraska polo and go hang out, you know, down at the uh, the corner bar, or the coffee shop, and. Um, you know, I I think it's a good hire, but again, people are tired of hires and tired of promises, and they want action. I thought Tom's column was really good, and the regular guy thing he picked up on and wrote about. And as I as I read what he wrote, I reflected too on, and I mean this as a compliment. I feel like I've met a lot of Troy Dannon type of guys in my life. Um, you know, like he's. He's kind of a regular guy, like Tom said. He's probably a quarter zip, uh, you know, blue jeans, the tailgate, one beer, probably not 10, you know, likes sports, competitive, probably golfs. Like, I feel like I've met a lot of those people in my life, and they're, they're all just pretty generally, you know, they're intense, but they're not like um, whatever you want to call it. And he's not like Trev Alberts. Like Alberts, and I really liked Trev. Like, I, I think we saw eye to eye on a lot of things. Trev saw a lot, a, a, was kind of a heterodox thinker. He saw around the corner a lot. Um, and and I think that challenged people in some ways. I think Gannon's going to be more of a standard AD. Like, he's going to take care of his coaches. I don't know that he would have been the kind of AD that would have proposed a $450 million stadium renovation. I thought his answer that he gave about that was right down the middle of the road. I'm not going to commit to anything. But then he said those words, does it help us win? And I think Trev could have given an answer to that. But I think what Dan was saying is, okay, you know, what do our coaches want? How can we help them to maximize everything we do? And let's not do anything that isn't in their mind top of top of the order. And so I think he'll be aligned with Rule in that way. Rule's going to have thoughts about what he wants. And I think Dan is going to listen closely to that. Um the other thing I would say is I, I've watched a few AD uh, press conferences over the years. I don't recall any of them ever having the governor at speak. Uh, and I don't recall that being the case at any of Nebraska's pre previous AD searches. I don't recall the, 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 board, the president of the Board of Regents speaking at that event. And so that was a unique change. I think that's designed to show alignment you know, in lieu of a permanent president, which will probably be Jeffrey Gold here in, in late uh, April, and just sort of a built-in structure. But it was unique. I think when you use the word unique, that's what I thought. And I, and, and I did feel like, you know, by the time that Dan had spoke, which was somewhere around 24 or 25 minutes into the presser, I was ready for him to talk because it felt like there was a big, long ramp up to him. And I thought he handled himself pretty well. Told a few jokes. They weren't like, they weren't, over, he wasn't trying to be too funny, but he told a few jokes and got a few laughs and uh, seems very competitive. 
and, you know, understand. And, and this is a, I think it'd be fair to say this is, this is a destination job for him and uh, he will, he will run at it. I mean this again, I like Trev Alberts. I think Trev Alberts destination job is what exists in his own mind. Cause he's a visionary kind of guy. And he he will try to execute that vision where at wherever he's at. That's how smart he is. I think Dannon will will look at Nebraska and say, "I am going to take this place as far as I possibly can in a short amount of time as I can because this is my opportunity to really elevate an athletic department." And so I think Tom's right when he says, "Doesn't matter how long; could be three years, could be five, but I think Dan is really going to run at it, and he's going to be super competitive." Sam, right. I thought, too, we talked about the idea of their backgrounds, where Trev Alberts went from being a high NFL draft pick to an analyst position at ESPN to the AD seat, essentially. And you look at you contrast that with what Troy Dannon has done, where he spent a good early portion of his career leading a, a, the governing body of the, the high school girls side in, in Iowa. And so like, that's, that's different. Like you're, what you're asked to do and what you, the things that the, the tasks that you complete on a career arc, like that's a lot different than what Trent Alberts had. So I think that's interesting. I would add too, like the, the lens that I tried to look at the press conference through is like, okay, in what ways, uh, in what way maybe does Troy Dannon differ the most from Trev Alberts. And the thing I was curious about was the vision side of things, because I, I think we all agree Trev was very forward thinking. And I think Dannon is too, but maybe in just a little bit of a different way. And to me, the most striking part of it was how he talked about NIL and how just the line that he gave about how he was going to wear 1890 apparel just as much as he was going to wear Nebraska apparel and that you really have to embrace that moment, even if you're not comfortable with it. He talked about you know, revenue sharing with players in five years or less. And so I think he's leaning more into that than Trev did. And maybe that informs some of the discussion about the stadium renovation. Like, are you really trying to raise $450 million for South Stadium when however much of that could go towards NIL and and roster retention and roster uh, recruiting, talent recruiting? Like that was the other part that really stuck out to me was his emphasis on resourcing, retaining, um, and, and recruiting. And so just a different idea, sort of, a, I don't know, more of an every man's view maybe of, of the basics that it takes to win. Did, did you guys kind of feel that as well, where maybe some of his priorities or, or his emphases were a little bit different than Trev's? I mean, yeah, I think there's, it's, it's, it's still too early to tell maybe, um, you know, I just, I don't know. I mean, I'm all for the stadium thing. I think it, the stadium ought, ought to be uh, remodeled and, and and certainly burn up to date and 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 maybe even uh, look ahead a little bit to what, what people are going to want. But I, I'm certainly not smart enough to know if, if they need all that now or not, and 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 if this is too much money or not. And um, I think I think there's was, was some pushback by the, by the regions for somebody. It was, it was probably always a good idea, uh, just to make sure. I mean, I, I, I watched Trev uh, go after the the Baxter Arena project in Omaha, and there was a lot of skepticism. You know, what's UNO going to do with their own arena? They they can't they can't fill it. They can't manage it. It's it's, it's over their head, and it's worked out great. But I feel like Trev was. I mean, when when he's determined, he, he's a bull, and he's going to get what he wants um, until he gets what he wants. He's going to go for it until he gets, gets what he wants. I wonder if this was sort of his legacy thing at Nebraska, the stadium thing. And um, I think it's interesting. Troy come in, Troy Dana coming in and saying, well, you know, we'll see if it makes sense. Um, you know, just because you have all this money, and Nebraska has a lot of money, um, doesn't mean you don't have to spend it. Doesn't mean you have to use it. Let's use it wisely. And um, you know, I th- I I think Trump thought it was wise. He he sent out a survey, the fans, he did all he did all that the right way. And I think everybody feels like this is probably a good idea. But I I was I think a, a, a second opinion is interesting too. So and a lot of places you now. KU just blew up their stadium. They're going to build over. But 
a lot of places do this stuff kind of part by part. You know, you know they do a little bit of it at a time. So I, I think this may be on hold for a while. And that's that's not a, it's not a bad thing. Um, but, you know, I, what is Troy Dannon here to do? Every AD, it seems, has had a job to do over the years. Uh, the, you know, they, they brought in Bill Byrne. He was going to modernize the department. Bring it out of the seventies and eighties uh, into the nineties, um, which he did and did very well. Um, and then you know, C. Peterson was come brought in to be, be more sort of, of the opposite, but he was the opposite. But uh, be more Nebraskan, do more Nebraska things. Um, Osborne was brought in to be the anti Peterson. Um, I course was. Brought in to be the anti Osborne by Harvey Perlman. So I feel like we, like football coaches, have been the opposites, been hired to be the opposite. The ADs have also been hired to be the opposite. Um, and so Bill, Bill Moose was the opposite of Icors. Trev was the opposite of Moose. Uh, now, what is Troy Dennis' role? Um, I feel like he's got a great head coach in place, which a lot of the others did not. Um, and they hired guys that didn't work out. He didn't have to, didn't have to do that right now. He's not his job is he he didn't have to come in, and and um, you know the the football fixing job is already in place by rule. So that's not his deal. Uh, I think he just kind of coming in to um, you know make things better and make sure things are modern. Um, you know, Trev was not a big fan of 1890, and uh, some of that stuff came out, and some of it didn't. But it's, um, I, I thought Troy would get on board, and and that's what Matt Rule's doing. You know, Matt Rule has been very uh, supportive of 1890, so maybe this is getting on that on the, everybody on the same page there. Um, it's it's an interesting thing, but um, I, I I think Dannon is is. Um, a guy who doesn't have to do a whole lot, but he's got to take what's going on, and 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 and, and put his spin on it. You know, make it better, and, and keep an eye on it. Um, and uh, you know, so it's it's an interesting uh, thing. Everybody's been brought in for a job. You know, now what is his job? What do you think, Sam? Do, any anything you want to add about? I think your impressions that, were I think that about sums it up. You know, okay. I, I I think there's there's going to be time to reflect on you know the work that that Alberts did, and then where Dannon hits the ground running. What I'll say about Dannon is he strikes me as a very very hard worker, tireless worker, the kind of person that you know wasn't a wasn't an elite college athlete and had to do it through sports information and was an SID. It was a women's basketball SID and then worked for the Iowa high school girls athletic union for 19 years. And then, you know, being an AD at Northern Iowa for eight years is a whole different thing than being an AD at Nebraska. There's a lot of things you have to do as the AD at Northern Iowa that are, that are, that are just a little bit more uh, elbow grease. And you're probably, you're doing it with a smaller staff and you're doing it with this and that and the other. So there's aspects of him, you know, of his experience that to, would, would, would lead me to say, um, in contrast to perhaps Bill Luce, who spent 12 years at Oregon, you know, one of the best funded schools in America, that he, you know, Dan is going to, going to run at this really hard mm -hmm. and, and he will, uh, he'll, he'll put his effort in. Ultimately, the thing that he can do for Rule is if there's obstacles, he can try to knock those down because Matt Rule's, you know, has a has a vision and it'll leave the worker alone. So um, you got to let him run at that. And then I think your basketball program, your men's basketball program, is what it is and, and is 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 moving in a certain direction. And then the women's basketball program, you know, which we don't need to go into length today, is is where it's at. So. Those are your big three. And then volleyball is kind of on John Cook will take care of it. What are your other big sports? You know, you you do have to make sure that baseball stays on the right track, softball, wrestling, you know, got to figure out tile line. 
Uh, is Nebraska football going to continue to stay at 150 guys, or are they going to get the thing down to 125 so they don't have to add, you know, a, a, a sports program on the women's side? Because at this point, you know, Nebraska, although it attempts to be Title IX compliant, it's it's football size is it's not where it needs to be. So those are the things that I think that they'll work on. Um, I think it's, it's a good hire. The, the the stadium thing is the question mark, and it, it's a conversation, honestly. Once Dan declares what he's actually going to do, it's, that's the time to have more of the conversation. About hmm. Okay. Well, let's talk a little football specifically. And, uh, Tom, you can weigh in. I know you weren't at the the session with Rule and, and the open session earlier. You didn't this miss week. much, Tom. But uh, You didn't miss yeah. much. We had our first taste of – open practice. So we got a little bit of <clears throat> ball security drills and yeah. individual workouts. Crawling. That was kind of it. It was okay. Um, so from, from what you guys have seen and heard going in is, is the quarterback conversation topic one, two, three, and four this spring, or are there other things that have piqued your interest uh, that you're interested in learning more about here in the next month or so? Oh, it's it's always one, two, and three, and four. It seems, seems that way every year, um, especially when you've got who you have right now who just came in. It's there's a lot of interest, um, and, and certainly that's a big storyline. The spring is what can uh, Dylan Rayola do? How much do they give him, and what kind of progress? Um, but it's not like we're going to see much in the spring game. You know, we never do. Um, so. I, I I just you know this is not a very uh, it's it's not I mean it, it's a compelling spring ball and that it's year two it's um, you know time to go to the bowl um, you got you know the second year of the culture of the program and and so on and so forth but I don't know how much we're going to see get done this spring so you know we'll do the usual. You know, good stories on all the on all the players, and we'll tell people what they need to know. But I don't know that we're going to learn anything any more than any other spring. So, um, again, what I want to know is who are the leaders going to be? Because I think I think player leadership, second year especially after you go through a couple of these things with the off season competitions, which are fun to to hear about. You know, now this is where the leaders take over. This is where the leaders step up. And they have a lot of guys who came back. So I'm interested to see how that works out this spring. Um, who takes over this team and who, who's sort of in charge of making sure everybody's in, in line. Um, and I like I want to know that your running game. Offensive line and the running backs are the biggest piece of the 2024 season. Uh, Dylan Rayola is going to be Dylan Rayola. He's going to wow us. He may have a couple struggles. He'll be figuring things out. Defenses will be figuring him out and uh, so on and so forth. But I really think the running game is 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 where it's going to be at this year. Uh, it, it's what Rule has, has wanted to do. And so I, I, I think that's uh, this is a good time to, especially with a young quarterback, give him a little uh, security blanket. He didn't have to do everything. Um, and you've got that running game. Um uh, Third and three, um, you know, maybe it gets you to like second and seven, so on and so forth. The quarterback doesn't have to run as much, right? So, um, or at all. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, the quarterbacks are, are, are very interesting. And, but to me, there's other things that, you know, I hate to say they're, I wouldn't call them boring. I wouldn't call them mundane. Because in Nebraska, nothing's boring and nothing's mundane. Everything, everything matters. Everybody's got binoculars on everything. And uh, uh, you know, uh, when you're a Nebraska football fan, so. Um, but I just think there's um, some some things that this is a year two, and um, I, I want to see who's in charge, and I want to see who who's going to run the ball. Others will want to see other things. So yeah. you know. Uh, I think you can categorize the storylines as the things that can help you win games and the things that can, can help you not lose them. And quarterback play last year is something that cost Nebraska football games. And so 
it's a it's an important storyline in that regard because if you turn the ball over 2.7 times or whatever it was last year 2.4 times you're not good, you're not going to win many more games than you won this year and so that's one thing to watch and we have to be honest uh, when you play a, a true freshman the chances of you turning the ball over are uh decent because they've got to find a way to protect the football either one of those quarterbacks and then, as Tom referred to, the things that are going to help you win games are a run of the football, having better running back play. They got to get better there. They just have to get better there. Um, having receivers who can win one on one matchups when teams decide to go man, uh, that's important too. Developing, you know, not just one, but four or five receivers that you can count on. It's been a serious issue. I've written about it so many times that I'm kind of tired of writing about it, but I will write about it again of the series of wide receivers who have cycled in and out of this program um, who are recruited receivers, not transfers. The transfers have been pretty good. They've been Trey Palmer. You know, they've been, you know, uh, Samari Touré, Jamal Banks, Isaiah, who's there now. But they're actual recruits. They have to get some good recruits and develop them so that they don't leave. And so that's something that I think to watch from the most basic quarterback perspective yesterday of just watching practice, Evan, you know, they, they had a drop the bucket, drop in the bucket deal or whatever you want to call it, drop it in the bucket drill where you're trying to throw kind of a fade ball kind of up a line and you're, you know, you're trying to throw it up and then over the defender and, you know, Rayla struggled with that. Let's, we can be honest with that. I think that's fair. Um, he was throwing it the right way and kind of throwing it over the top, whereas Kalen was kind of throwing it up the line, the ball kind of coming inside out, which a lot of times defenders can knock away. But, you know, Rayola's got to get going to get better there. Um, certainly he's a, an impressive guy to watch. He's got really good lower body. Um, he tries to be light on his feet. I think he's trying to do the right things. Um, we'll see how good of a quarterback he is within a system and a structure. But sure, yeah, they got to run the ball better. There's a lot of different things that they have to do. On the defensive side of the ball, they look like a bunch of ass kickers. I'll just be honest. They look really right. good. They do. The defensive line looked – yesterday physically looked the, like the best defensive line they've had since Malik Collins and it's a Valentine are there and probably when Randy was there, Randy Gregor. So 2014, that's how good they look. Uh, the linebackers are small but fast. Bayer's not small, but – and he's not quite as fast. But, you know, they're small and fast there. And – this we didn't talk to about him yesterday, but this new corner Hill is really tall. I mean, he's like six two and a half long. Uh, you hope he can do some things. They feel really good about their safeties. You just listen to how they talked yesterday about their safeties, Buford and and Gifford, and probably Hartzog will be back there if Hill can can come along. The defense looked like a, just an ass kicking unit. They look really good, and. That's probably the culture that Rule wants to build is that they're always going to be able to prevent you from scoring. The question is whether they can get, I'm literally, guys, six more points, maybe four. Wouldn't take that much. But if they can find a way to score 25 points a game, they could win nine. Um, that defense looks terrific and really in good shape and all the other things. And we focused a lot on Nash Huntmaker yesterday. Too much, too much on that. that he's a great player and he'll be fine. But the guys I'm looking at are Jamari Butler and Cam Lenhart and, you know, some of the younger guys and then Bullock and so, the guys that are going to like, that aren't, Huttmacher is a great nose tackle and he can, he can, he can, um, he can hold up the middle and he's very good. He's going to play in the NFL, I think. But where Nebraska has got to get a little bit better is on those edges with those playmakers so that they don't have to dedicate six guys to going after the quarterback. And that's what I thought looked really, really good yesterday. So that's where I think Nebraska's at. And then you add in too, like some of the guys in green jerseys, like, you know, it's easy to kind of forget about Mav Noon a little bit. And then he's out there moving around and it's like, oh yeah, you know, he's, he's on track to play a part this year. And for sure. Prince Will coming back from his yes. procedure and Cam Lenhart taking the next step. Like it's All not the green New Jersey guys were doing stuff. Did you know they, were. they weren't just, there weren't guys just kind of standing around and in, in, you know, in the sweatsuit, just hang around. They, they, everybody was doing stuff, and Malachi was was um, he's got to he's got to grow a little. You can tell he's kind of lost maybe a little bit of mass. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, in principle, look good. And so like, this is a, this is a good looking roster. Um, but Tom's right about the run game. Isn't just about linemen being strong, but it's about running backs who are really good at running the ball, picking holes, not fumbling. And I don't know, Nebraska had, had, um, they had bottled up the secret sauce on how to do this for my entire youth. And then for like most of my young adulthood, all the way until Amir Abdullah left the program, they had figured out how to do this. And somewhere in there, they lost the ability to do it. And Mike Riley had something to do with that. And, you know, although I love Mike, but, but they haven't quite got it back yet. And they got to find a way to get it all the way back because that's how you beat teams by not having to use your quarterback to run the ball. You got to, you got to run the football. And Nebraska used to be able to do that better than anybody, and they don't do it as well as they used to by a long stretch. And that's what they got to figure out. The one thing I would add to the quarterback conversation too that I think is unique is there is a sense of urgency in the in the sense that Nebraska can still change the equation through the transfer portal in April and May if they want to do that. Like right, like you think back to the 2018 battle with Adrian Martinez and Tristan Jebbia. And they went through the spring and it was the reality was that somebody was going to win that job, but you weren't going to add somebody else to the competition. It was going to play out and it played out all the way up until game week. This is a situation and Matt rules been open about saying that like it, they're going to give these guys a ton of reps now. And that's one of the reasons they split up into these three uh, competitive teams. And if they like, if, if, if they like where these guys are and Matt rule said, Hey, the goal is for, for everyone to be a starter starter quality then they'll move forward with that. And if they don't, then they can go back to the portal and find a veteran, a safety net, whatever you want to call it. And so like, I think that adds a heightened sense of urgency to what's going on right now, because they need to evaluate in these 15 practices what they have so that they can decide whether to make a move or not. And I think that it just, it changes the dynamic from what maybe we've seen in the past to where uh, it's it's a really limited window to get that evaluation, and it's and it's important, right? Like, do you want to add someone else to that room? I think their their sense is no, you don't. But um, you know, no matter what they say, like the proof is going to be in the action or inaction that they take here in about a month. All right, yeah, let's, I, yeah. I, I, I I don't know who 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 would be available in April or May as a quarterback who could come in and play. Um, and you know, I, 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 I don't think that'll happen, because you know, you, you, <laughs> whoever you bring in isn't technically or probably going to be as good as Rayola. So I'm not sure, you know. Um, but I, I understand you want him to be you want him to be ready. I think they're, they're right now that they're they're going to press buttons on these quarterbacks and see how they respond a little bit. They're 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 they want to see who's competitive. And who gets after it? And I think that's great. I think that that part of spring is great. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know that 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 there's anybody out there uh, who's going to come in. Um, I mean, anybody who wants to play is not going to come to Nebraska right now because they all know Dylan Rayo is the guy. And all right, you could transfer here, but you're not going to play. So why would you transfer here? So. Um, I don't know that that's an option. I probably doubt it, but um, but if you if you're talking about bringing somebody in to be a backup, I they got a backup. They got they got plenty of guys. I I think they're they just you know is they have to walk the fine line between a, high expectations and also understanding this is not this is a position that is hard to do at, at college football's highest level. It's really hard to do. So um, just be, you know, they're going to cut them some uh, slack. They're going to, it's it's going to be a process. Um, I think they just, just want to find out who's who's going to compete right now. So, yeah, it's all, it's all good. Let's uh, close it with some Nebraska basketball talk. It's been a week now since Nebraska oh. lost in the NCAA tournament. What I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts on is did that game against Texas A&M and the way that it went, do you chalk that up to bad matchup, hot shooting day for the Aggies, or do you think there was something, uh, a larger truth 
that Nebraska can take from that as it reassembles its roster and reloads for next season? Is there something they need to to change based on what they saw, or is that sort of a one off circumstance? Well, yeah, I think they they um, you know I wrote about this after the game. It's a tough deal because for Hoiberg, you know. The, the, the goal was to win a game in the tournament and get past you know, Sweet 16 and so on and so forth. But to get to the tournament, you have to win in the Big Ten. And to win in the Big Ten, you have to play a certain way. It's that way with with, with, with the uh, 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 Big Ten football and basketball and maybe even baseball, although I don't know that to be true in baseball. Certainly, football and basketball. You, the, the Big Ten wants wants you to play their way, and they they they, they 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 kind of force you to do it. As we've seen, when you don't play their way, you don't win many games. So, um, physical, fundamentally sound, older players, um, you know, gym rats. These, you know, Big Ten is not a place where a lot of one and duns or a lot of high, a lot of uh, great, what you'd call um, great talents uh, are are going to hang out. That's that's the SEC in football, and uh, and basketball is probably the the, the Big Twelve. Um, but not certainly there are certain good players. But what I'm saying is, Evan, the you have you have to play a certain way to win the games, win enough games in the Big Ten to make the tournament. But then when you win the tournament, it's a it's a crapshoot. I mean, you know, uh, would Nebraska have been better served to, to, to get Michigan State's draw or maybe Northwestern's draw? You bet. Florida Atlantic would have been a better opponent. Um, uh, Mississippi State, would have, even though they won the SEC tournament, would have been a better fit. Um, A&M, when they're hitting their shots like that, they were as good as Houston. They were, they were basically Houston last week. Uh, they, they, took, they took Houston in the overtime, could have beat him. And nobody wants to play Houston, except maybe UConn. <laughs> I don't think anybody <laughs> wants I, mean, I had this conversation with somebody from uh, 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 Creighton last night. You, you are no part of Houston. You just, you just, you know, it's, 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 these are bad matchups all across the board for everybody. So, yeah, uh, Nebraska ran into the buzzsaw. They had no chance to stop. Brass's defense wasn't going to stop that. Their only chance was for Houston or a- AM to miss their outside shots where they could kind of hold off and they didn't have to come out on the perimeter and necessarily guard them there. And um Brassett didn't hit nearly enough shots to to make that happen. And um, you know, early on they they played well. They were they were up seven, but then it just got to a deal where Sometimes in the game you get stunned, and it goes downhill fast, and they just couldn't they couldn't score enough to catch up. Um, I chalk it up to a bad matchup, but I will also say, I think Hoiberg can doesn't have to be totally all Big Ten, all lunch bucket, all grit and grinders. And he can go get a couple guys he had at Iowa State too. So, um, but again, you've got to get to the tournament first, and then. I mean, this is why you don't see a lot of Big Ten teams make the Final Four. <laughs> they just don't have the uh, the makeup that a lot of those other other teams do, because um, they're really they're so tied into their identity. And I'm really interested to see how the West Coast teams have impact this in football and basketball. Um, you know, because the Big Ten, as as we know, loves being the Big Ten, and. Um, so I think I, th- I think Fred will figure this out. Um, it's a portal world. He's going to get some guys, and um, it'll be interesting to see what kind of big guys he is able to get: rebounders, uh, shot blockers, and so on and so forth. So, um, anyway, that's that's my take. There's four guys in the portal now. I don't think any of those guys are coming back. Uh, C.J. Wilcher, Eli Rice, Blaze Keita. Ramel Lloyd, and speaking of you know posts, obviously Keita was was somebody they would have counted on if he had come back, but he, he's obviously not. We don't know who rank what rank mass is going to do. 
I think he has an opportunity to play pro ball maybe in uh, his home country. And so he's going to have to weigh that option. Of course, if he doesn't come back, that is a loss. I, I think Mast at times was was hot and cold over the last half of the season, but but that would be a loss for Nebraska. Um, when I was writing my rewind on, on Monday, I think what I put is that, one, people kind of took a dig at Nebraska for not being tough in that game, and I disagree with that. That that claim, I I think, I think Nebraska played a lot of tough teams this year and, and won some of those games. Purdue's tough and they beat Purdue. When Wisconsin's tough and Duquesne is tough, right? I mean Duquesne beat BYU. Um, so I think I think Nebraska you know, was tough enough. I think athletically they could stand to get a little faster, um, foot speed, agility, ability to get to the rim, maybe the ability to you know cut a guy off from getting to the rim. It didn't feel like A&M had much resistance there. I, I, because I cover the NCAA tournament here, I was able to watch Iowa state. And I think Iowa state would have won lots of games in the big 10. They lost last night to Illinois, but I think they would have lost won a lot of games in the big 10. And I think they have good athletes, but I wouldn't describe any of the guys on that team as like all American. I think they're just a solid, fundamental, hard-playing defensive basketball team. And I do think that Nebraska could look at that program and say, we can we can get a lot of the guys that they have. Um, you know, their best defender is from Ames, Iowa, uh, Taman Lipsy. And, you know, they've got some other guys that are good defenders, but I wouldn't describe them again as like five-star guys. So I think Nebraska can build into that. And the other thing that I pointed that I mentioned was I do think you have to schedule just a little bit harder next year in the non-conference. And the reason I say that is because it, Tom is exactly right about the Big Ten's identity. You also have teams like Alabama, who is now in the Elite Eight, and I think will we'll make the Final Four. And what Alabama did in the early season, they lost a lot of these games. But Alabama went and played Gonzaga and Creighton and Clemson and um, Purdue and, and Canada, they play, They played a really hard schedule. They went into the SEC. They dominated the SEC. I think they finished second to Tennessee. And then they get to the NCAA tournament, and they're pretty damn good because they battle-tested. Now, I'm not saying that Nebraska should play the teams that I just listed. That's a little too hard. Alabama felt like it could win the national championship, and so it's scheduled that way. But I do think Nebraska can schedule harder than they did this most recent year. Now, the way they did it this most recent year was perfect. It's exactly what they needed. Now they need to find a way to say, okay, we have to expect to face a team like Texas A&M in the NCAA tournament, who's quicker than we are. How do we get those teams on our schedule? Will Bolt does the exact same thing, Evan. It's like, how do we prepare ourselves for what we might see in a regional via our schedule early in the season? Because we know the Big Ten will not test us and so I think that's the area where Hoiberg, who has lots of connections, they just got to have a couple of games against teams like that, and I think it'll make them better. That's my that's my take. In Nebraska, you mentioned the departures, but it's going to look different with some of the they're, – they're clearly active in the portal already. Frankie Fiddler was at Nebraska's football practice uh, earlier this week. So, you know, what, what, could, what could he add, or, or, or maybe what's the profile – of a guy that Nebraska is looking for to sort of take that next step that you're describing. It could go a bunch of different ways, Evan, a bunch of different ways. So for, I, I don't know that I would describe Frankie as, you know, this player that's like super quick. I think he's a really good scorer. He's probably one of the top 30 transfers in the portal, according to on three. Uh, so there's things that he can do. Uh, he He's going to Wisconsin too. He's a good defender. Um, he's a wing that can maybe take the place of departing wings um, and he can maybe give you a few more points. I also feel like though, they, they really do need a guard who uh, can just get to the rim and as a point guard and, and we point guards have so many different definitions to them. I'm not saying they got to get De'Aaron Fox. I'm not saying that. I am saying that you got to get a guy that, that can go get a steal and a half a game and can also get all the way to the rim. And, and um, you know, Jamarcus Lawrence kind of can do those things, but he seems more comfortable off the bench. So can you go find a 6'2", 6'3", 6'4", player? doesn't have to be Hunter Salas who can do those things. And that's that's where I would start with them. And 
you know, and then William Kyle is visiting Nebraska next week, early next week, according to multiple reports. He's a South Dakota State player who was at Bell West. William Kyle on the floor, the one player that Iowa State played in the first two games that they played here in Omaha that looked like they should be playing for Iowa State was William Kyle. He had that component to his game. He was very athletic, very quick, jumps off, jumps off the floor like that. Um, Nebraska would be very, very well advised to, to land him. I don't know if they will. He's going to get a ton of opportunities. He's not just going to be limited to Nebraska and Creighton. He'll be able to go almost anywhere in the country. Mm. We'll see what happens. Real quick on uh, women's basketball, Sam. They did win their first round game. They had a chance to go to the Sweet 16. I just want to ask, you know, generally speaking, did they max out this year? Did that team max out its potential with how far it got? Yes. Yes, they exceeded my expectations mm. for sure. I think they matched them through the end of the regular season. That was about where I thought they'd be. But they went to the Big Ten tournament, and they won two more games than I thought they would and almost beat Iowa again. And then they won an NCAA tournament game. And I kind of thought they'd win that game, but like I thought it'd be down to one possession, which it was. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think one of the issues that I think Amy's teams have had is once they get like past early March – they don't they haven't been very good. I mean, they were not terribly competitive in their two previous NCAA tournament games that they lost to Arizona State or Gonzaga. And they haven't been great at times in the Big Ten tournament either. Um, but they peaked. And you could tell by the way that they responded that they really believed that they were going to go a long way. So, you know, I, I think they I think they maxed out. I think they can get slightly better next year, um, dependent on how quickly Britt Prince acclimates to the college game. And depending on if they're able to go in the, the portal and get um, at least one post and per, and preferably another guard. Col women's college basketball is, is, is largely a guard game at the level that Nebraska plays it. Now, at the highest level, South Carolina has good guards, but they have incredible post players. And um, LSU has good guards, but they have incredible, you know, they have Angel Reese. So at the highest level, if you want to be a Final Four team, you better have those players. But what Nebraska wants to get initially is it's just having great guards. And if you can have great guards, you can you can be a consistent Sweet 16 team. So getting better there. Well, I think that'll be our podcast for the week. Tom's going to be up late hanging out in Detroit way after most people's bedtime. I'm going to be following Nebraska baseball against Northwestern this weekend. And we'll be back next week with plenty more on – spring football uh, and, and seeing what those developments might be as well. So for those who observe uh, Easter, we, we wish you guys a, a happy Easter weekend as well. For Tom and Sam, I'm Evan. This is the Pick 6 Podcast. Thanks for listening, Husker fans. Thanks.